Welcome back to Learn Azure Explore for part two of our three-part line follower series. In the last video, we learned about the quad RGB sensor and how it detects lines. We learned to read the value reported by the quad RGB sensor module and how to interpret each of the 16 values from 0 through 15. In this video, we'll continue by learning how to define the detection logic and the reaction logic that is crucial to understand and plan out our block program. Before we get back into the line follower project, I want to spend a minute or two explaining a general framework that you can use to think about any of your robotics projects. In any robotics project, there will generally be two steps. First, there's something that we want the robot to detect or sense. In this example, we want the robot to detect obstacles in its path. Once we've detected it, based on the detection, we want the robot to decide how to react. This is the reaction step. In this example, let's say that the reaction is for the robot to stop driving forward. So there are two main steps, the detection step and the reaction step. And typically, the robot performs this in a loop until we want it to stop. Now let's take a closer look into the detection step as it relates to our line follower robot. We know that there are four sensors on the quad RGB sensor module, two on the left and two on the right. This means that the robot could sense which side of the line it is currently on. So we have four situations or scenarios that we want to be able to detect. First, the line could be sensed only by the right sensors, either R1 or R2 or both. Second, the line could be sensed only by the left sensors, only L1 or L2 or both. Third, the line could be sensed by both the left and the right sensors, that is L1 and R1, like in this case, or in any other combination of left and right sensors, for example, L2, L1, and R1, as shown here, or L1, R1, and R2, as shown here. Or if the line is wide enough, it could be sensed by all four sensors. Assuming there's just one line in our track, it is unlikely that the line is only sensed by L2 and R2, or L1 and R2, or L2 and R1. But we will consider this to be the same case of having the line sensed by both the right and the left sensors. Finally, there's a fourth case where none of the sensors detect a line. This means that the robot is not on the line at all. Now that we have our scenarios that we need to detect laid out here, the next step is to see how we can detect these scenarios in our block program using the values that the quad RGB sensor gives us. To do this, we will go back to the table of combinations, also known as the truth table, that we put together in our previous tutorial. From this table, let's identify the four detection scenarios. The first row in the table is the case where none of the four sensors detected a line. That is L2, L1, R1, and R2 all report zeros. This matches scenario four, where neither left nor right sensors detect a line. Let's write that down in our scenario column. The second row has only R2 detecting a line. This matches scenario one. We can see that the next two rows also match the same scenario where only one or both of the right sensors detects a line, while no line is detected on the left sensors. Let's update our scenario column with this information. Moving on to the next row, we see that only L1 detects a line. So this matches scenario two, where the line is detected only on the left side of the robot. For the next three rows, we see that at least one left and at least one right sensor detects a line. This corresponds to scenario three, so let's write that down. On to the next row, here we see only L2 detects a line, so this matches scenario two, where the line is detected only on the left side of the robot. 
Looking at the next three rows, we have a combination of left and right sensors detecting the line. So this matches scenario three. Moving on to the next row, we see that the left sensors detect the line. So this matches scenario two. And finally, the last three rows have a combination of left and right sensors detecting a line. So this matches scenario three. Wow, that was quite a bit of work. If you've come along so far, give yourself a pat on the back. You're doing great. Now that we have a complete mapping of the decimal value reported by the quad RGB sensor to the scenario that we'd like to detect, let's take this part of the table and start building the detection logic. For scenario four, it is straightforward. Scenario four shows up in this table exactly once when the value reported by the sensor is exactly zero. So we can write this logic down in our detection logic table. We will now discard decimal value zero from our consideration for the remainder of the section. In our block program, this discarding can be done by building the remaining logic in the else part of the if then else block as shown here. The next three rows are the only ones that have scenario one assigned to them. So here's a question. How can we represent values one, two, and three with respect to the decimal value? We can simply say that if the decimal value is less than four, we're going to be in scenario one. Only the right sensors detect the line. This is because one, two, and three are less than four, and we removed zero from consideration because we'll be adding the remaining logic in the else case as we saw previously. Moving on, we see that decimal values 4, 8, and 12 correspond to scenario 2 where only the left sensors detect the line. We could have our logic as simply if the decimal value is 4 or 8 or 12. However, there is a nicer mathematical representation for this. The field of robotics involves mathematics, so I'll take this opportunity to bring in some math concepts here. If you closely look at this, you'll notice that 4, 8, and 12 are the only multiples of 4 between 4 and 15. So let's change our detection logic to reflect this. However, we need a mathematical operator to represent this logic. If you would like to take a guess as to which operator can be used to detect multiples of a given number, in this case, we want to detect multiples of four, feel free to pause the video to think about it. All right, I hope you gave it some thought. And if you guess the modulo operator, you would be absolutely right. If the modulo operator is new to you, here's a brief overview. The modulo operator represented by the percentage symbol gives us the remainder when one number is divided by another. For example, six modulo four is two. How did we get that? Let's break it down. Six divided by four gives us a quotient of one and a remainder of two. And since the modulo operator gives us this remainder, six modulo four equals two. I can hear you say, this is great and all, but how do we use the modulo operator to detect that the decimal value is a multiple of four? Well, here it is. If a number is a multiple of four, then it is evenly divisible by four. This means that the remainder when dividing the multiple of four by four should be zero. Hence, for all multiples of four, that multiple modulo four will result in zero. You don't believe me? Well, I've shown you the result of the modulo operation for each of the remaining decimal values here. And you can clearly see that only for the multiples of four between four and 15, the modulo four operation results in zero. We can now update our detection logic for scenario two to be if decimal value modulo four equals zero. We are at the last scenario for our detection logic. Since everything that remains is all just scenario three, we can simply say that other than the three scenarios already detected above, all other decimal values will be mapped to scenario three. 
Awesome work! We now have our final detection logic in this table. You now have a great grasp on the detection logic, which is one of the two main steps in our project. If you need a quick break, now would be a good time. Take a five minute walk or go grab some healthy snack or refill your water. If you're doing this together with your friend, you could take some time to reflect on what you've learned and discuss with them. Once you're back, we'll continue with defining the reaction logic. Feel free to pause and take a short break and come back to continue the video. All right, let's get back to more fun. I hope you had a good break if you took one. Now that we've defined our detection logic, we will move on to defining the logic for our reaction step, which is step two of our project. The reaction logic is simply telling us what the robot should do in each of the detected scenarios. The first row here is the case where no line is detected by any of the sensors. In this case, the robot has no idea where the line is. The robot could be on the right side of the line, like here, or it could be on the left side of the line, like in this image. The sensor, and hence the robot, has no idea. What can we do here? Since we have no information from the sensor, the best thing we can do is to define the behavior ourselves. For this project, if there is no line detected by any of the sensors, we will have the robot turn left. This means that if you're starting the program with the robot away from the line, you should place the robot to the right side of the line that you want the robot to follow. So let's write that down in our reaction logic for scenario four, where there's no line. In the next scenario, the line is sensed only on the right side as shown here. This indicates that the robot is not centered on the line and is a bit too far to the left. This means that in order to correct its path to be more centered on the line, the robot should turn slightly to the right. Let's update our reaction logic table with this decision. Moving on, the next case is where the line is sensed only on the left side, as shown here. This indicates that the robot is again not centered and is a bit too far to the right. In order to correct its path to be more centered on the line, the robot should turn to the left. We'll add this info into our reaction logic column. In the last case, where the line is sensed by both the left and right sensors, as shown here, no correction is needed. The robot can continue driving forward. Let's put that decision in our reaction logic table as well. Congratulations! By following along in this video, you've now defined the detection logic and the reaction logic for the line follower robot project. I promise you that the time you spent learning about the quad RGB sensors values in the previous video and the time that you spent learning to define the detection and reaction logic in this video will be worth it. It will make the programming effort so much easier. The next steps would be to take the detection and reaction logic that we defined here and implement it in our very own block program, which I'll cover in the next video. If you found value in this video, hit the like button and subscribe to learn as you explore for more MBOT2 tutorials. Here are some of my other videos that you may find helpful. Happy programming, and I'll see you in the next one.